Rodman, and today we're going to go over the planetary aspects that are surrounding us and affecting us for this upcoming week of September 25th through October 1st. Man, oh man, this week, we I'm going to call it back to the future, okay, because what we have is three planetary aspects that are happening for the second time this year, and one of them especially is a really, really uh, important uh, aspect because it only happens every 15 years, and this really started last year as well. So this week, we have a lot of deja vu moments, things that are happening, things that are resurfacing from when these aspects initially happened in the springtime. Ironically, they all happened in the spring, and ironically, they're all happening again in the same week span of time this week. So it's going to be a really interesting week of deja vu, a lot of things about looking to the past, a lot of things where the past resurfaces and it comes back, and... Yes, so let's get right to it then. Eh? So the first of it is this underlying energy that we have coming from the equinox. That's the number one thing that we have. And we have the spring equinox and we have the fall equinox every year. And what that represents is where the day and the night share equal amounts of day, daylight and darkness. So in turn, it has us kind of looking to ourselves to look at our own internal light and darkness, our own external light and darkness, and bringing balance between the two of them. The paper keeps flying over here. <laughs> Dang wind. So that energy carries through. Now, when this happened, of course, was at the spring equinox. And in that time frame, we had a lot of these planets retrograde that are going to be impacting us again this week. Now, when the planet goes retrograde, it's like its energies are working backwards. They're having us look to the past to try to determine how to make that planet work better for us moving forward. Now, with the spring equinox, there was a lot of things that were surfacing, bringing to light things that had to change because this is the year of new beginnings, right? 2017 is the number one year in numerology. It's the year where things change where we have new beginnings that take place from the endings that were initiated under the energies of last year of a 16 of a nine year now this week not only do we have that equinox energy that happened from this past weekend reminding us of these wounds but it's reminding us that we need to heal them that it's time to really start moving forward from them and the energies of this week also kind of help support that as well. Now, the first one that we have this week starting, the other three ones that I have that are repeating this week, we have Mercury squaring Saturn, which is a lot about having to do with serious conversations with ourselves about things and with others. We have the Equinox for Healing. We have Jupiter and Uranus in opposition, which is about breaking free of the past. And we have Mars and Pluto making a harmonious connection to really bring some productive energy in to really bring these changes, um, the momentum moving forward, right? So let's start with it, uh, with the planetary aspects, not just the equinox that we had happening, but let's go into the planetary aspects that are happening right now. Mercury is the planet of the mind, right? And what's happening on Monday, it starts this energy off as it squares with Saturn. The last time this happened was in the spring, around the time of Easter, right when Saturn had gone retrograde. Now, Saturn is our planet of karma. It's our planet of lessons. Mercury, of course, being the planet of the mind. So when these two square off, a lot of issues from our past come to mind. This one in particular is about... Um, like I said, having those serious conversations with ourselves about where we're at, where we're going, what's happened since that time frame in the spring. Now, of course, we all know that the, uh, the eclipse this year, this major eclipse, really shined a light on what it is that we need to change to bring greater happiness for ourselves. Underlying current of this whole year is thinking with the heart instead of the head and really leading us into happiness in those next phases that we have in our evolution of our life this time, right? A lot of changes have to happen. Now, Saturn reminds us of the hard work that we have to do to make these changes. It reminds us of the karmic influences as to why these things happen in the first place. Um, and it reminds us that we have to have proper structures and stability to really have a good footing to make any major changes last. Now, with Mercury squaring up with it this week, 
this time it changes because before we were looking to the past about how those situations were affecting us, how our structures are, how our family is, how our stability is, how our working is, because Saturn is the planet of our career and our work, hard work. So before we were really looking to the past, now we're moving forward. And in that process, because Mercury is involved with it this time, it can lead to some depression. It can make us kind of sad about what we've lost, what's what's in the past, what's changed. Um, so just to be aware of that this week, that there may be a little bit of a weird start to it because we're sad about what we're leaving behind. But the thing is now, this energy only lasts for a few days, so just make sure that you enjoy getting out in the sunshine or reading a good book or something that really brings happiness to you. Get outside with your pet. Spend some time with your kids. Take a walk around the bookstore. Whatever it is that brings you a little bit of extra joy, be sure to do it this week. And in the process, feed your mind, right? Communicate. That's the pro that's the positive aspects that Mercury has to bring. So um, no matter what, even though it may bring some sadness through, it also helps us to get serious with ourselves about what has happened. It helps us to get serious with others and to really say things that maybe we don't necessarily have the confidence to do any other time. Another thing that's really pushing that is that Jupiter and Uranus uh, opposition that we have going on. This is the one that I was saying was a 15-year cycle. We don't have this happen because these are both slow-moving planets. So when they make an impact like this, when they make an aspect like this, it's going to impact us a lot more so than, say, fast-moving planets like Mercury or Venus. Of course, they impact us, but when we have something this major happen, it really, really creates an undercurrent. And they're not just quick moving aspects. They happen over the course of a year. Now, the first time that this happened was last fall when Jupiter, the planet that expands us, and Uranus, the planet that liberates us, when they went into this opposition with one another. This is huge. This is a huge, huge thing. Now, what happens is these two go into opposition. It blows up our situation because that's what Jupiter does, that magnificent, huge planet that it is. It likes to blow things up. It likes to push us out of the boundaries where we set ourselves in. It likes to break us free of those karmic ties. It likes to help us say, you've worked hard enough through that Saturn. Now, here are these blessings. Here is the luck that happens as a result because you're going off of your faith that things are going to be better, that I need to change this, that I need to get beyond these limitations that I've set for myself. Now Uranus on the other end is the planet that wants to free us from the chains of the past. It wants to break us out of ruts that don't work anymore. It wants to break old habits. It wants to end old relationships that we've already fulfilled our karmic purpose with. It wants to break ties with jobs that don't bring us happiness. It wants to push us on the path of greater individuality and greater self-sufficiency. What it is that our soul is here to do. And that's what the universe is trying to bring this year through a lot of different venues, including the eclipse, with North Node going into Leo. All of these things are focused in a 20-year cycle pushing us to our soul's evolution as to what our soul purpose is to do. What is our soul's job here this lifetime? And you'll see a lot of things shifting underfoot to make sure that that happens so that your soul can be happy doing what it was set out here to do when you decided to come down on this planet Earth in this incarnation, right? Those things come to light again this week, but this time we don't have Jupiter retrograde. So before... It reminded us of the hard work that we have to do, right? There's that Saturn again reminding us of all the hard work we've had to do. Now that Jupiter has gone direct, we have a little bit more luck on our side. What it really wants us to do is break us free of the past. It brings us new opportunities. It brings us luck. It opens doors where there used to be walls. That's what happens when this energy occurs. And the main part of it is, is that it helps us with our internal compass. It helps us find our true north, and it helps for us to know exactly what direction we need to go to lead us to those greater levels of happiness that 2017 has really been set in front of us to bring. First half of the year was a lot about the struggle and the looking to the past and the letting go, and now the second half is promising to bring us those new opportunities, people, networks, luck, all of these things to help push us into finding that true point north that we, we need to go. 
Now the last effect that we have happening, okay, that was from the springtime, reopening those wounds, helping us to remember all those things that we need to change, is Mars making a harmonious connection with Pluto. Mars is the engine that drives us. Mars is our ambition. Mars is our passion and the inner fire that we have within us. Now Pluto is the planet that is the planet of endings. It's the planet of transformations that come from losses that happen. It's a very intense planet because it moves so slow. And when it makes impacts to our planets, especially personal planets like Mercury or Venus or Sun or Moon, when it makes a connect in Mars, of course, when it makes a connection with that, it's ready to bring some change. Okay, and we haven't had this happen since Mars went into this trine with Pluto back in the springtime, ironically that same time of Lent. Um, now when these two work together, like they're going to this week, we've got a lot of all this underlying currents, everything kind of the past being brought back to us. Now Mars wants to get us moving forward. It doesn't want to stay stuck in the past. And Pluto will change and transform whatever it needs to to make sure that we go into that next level and into that next evolution. So this energy that's pushing through towards the end of the week, especially when this happens, is that it's a productive energy to really get things done. We're crossing off our to-do lists mentally and physically, right? We have the energy to really do that and to make some big impacts. And if you want to go even bigger, too, now is that time when we're really starting to make those steps forward to healing, making those difficult transitions, because that's what Pluto likes to do. It likes to push us into our uncomfortable zones to make the changes, and Mars gives us the confidence to do it. So this may be the week that you really make those changes. Maybe this is the week that you say, okay, I've realized through the spring, through the eclipse in the summer, I need to change my job. I'm going to make the steps forward this week to sending out my resumes. And you'll find, especially with that Jupiter and Uranus opposition coming back around, and that remains throughout the remainder of the year, that opportunities are going to appear for you to do that. Maybe you want to set out on your own. This is an opportunity where clients will appear. The universe is going to work with you depending on what you send out into the universe, okay? And this is a week that reminds us of that, that our thoughts create our reality as well. Especially because Pluto goes direct now. That's the great thing because Pluto also, ironically, went retrograde back on 420 around that time of Easter. And as it goes back, we're looking to our past losses because that's what a lot of Pluto deals with is death and loss and transformations that happen as a result. It's like that metamorphosis of the butterfly, right? But you have to be that caterpillar first that goes into the cocoon, that has to introspect, that has to go through change, right? There's a loss that results. And so when Pluto goes retrograde, it doesn't impact all, all of us as much because it's such a slow-moving planet and it goes retrograde for half of the year. But the people that it makes the biggest impact on are our Scorpio friends. This is a big year for Scorpio because a lot of what's happening is a subconscious dump for you. There were a lot of things that came to light this year for our Scorpio friends. Um, especially in terms of childhood and past that maybe they weren't necessarily seeing in the right light. Now they see it in the right light. And I feel that this is a week of major change and transformation where you start seeing the light and forgive and healing that comes from the things that really changed this year for you. Jupiter's coming through your sign in a way it hasn't for 14 years too, infusing you with hope and optimism and luck and opportunities in ways you haven't seen for 14 years. So this is a big start for our Scorpio friends in terms of major changes that you are ready to do um, on a personal level because a lot of subconscious dumping has had to happen for you. And it affects us all too, of course, right? But especially our Scorpio friends now that Pluto's going direct on Thursday the 28th. Now, another thing that we have happening is Venus Day mm -hmm. on Friday, the 29th. Now, why they call it Venus Day is because it's in honor of Frigg, the goddess of uh, love and marriage and destiny, uh, the English goddess from the old, olden days. She was the one that people would turn to when they had issues with their love, with their money, with their marriage, with their happiness. Uh, all things that Venus rules. But she's also the goddess of 
trusting our intuition in those times of major transformation, in times of transition, in times of change. And that is a year that 2017 really is, is a lot of change. And she's the one that helps bring us harmony and peace in that time frame. Archangel Jophiel is also the angel that emulates that energy too. You'll find throughout mythology and history that we have a lot of the same characters. They just have a different name. <laughs> so every culture is going to have a goddess or, uh, or an archetype or a symbol or a hero that carries with it the same energy as the next culture too. But we all have one that represents the feminine energy of love and marriage and all those things. And in, in Venus Day, we, we send that energy to Frigg, right? So it kind of all pulls together that reminds us that this is the year of Venus. This is the year of thinking with the heart over the head. This is the year where we focus on what brings us greater happiness, whether it's a new job, whether it's a new love, whether it's a new you name it, whatever it is, you're following what your heart's telling you to do. And on Friday, ironically, of course, Venus Day, Venus is going to be making a couple of connections. One, it's going to be in opposition with Neptune. This is the one time of year it happens. And in the process, Neptune is a planet that really mm, kind of puts us in the fog. When it has a negative aspect happening to a planet, it tends to bring out the shadow side of Neptune. But it also brings out the positive side, too. But So you got one or the other. We can go with the shadow side first. We'll go with the bad first. Neptune can deceive. Neptune can confuse. So you may find that there's a lot of energy towards the end of the week in terms of relationships uh, in, in the heart center. But also with our money, too. It's not just about love. Venus is about money. So there may be a little bit of confusion, deception, something along those lines where something was hidden from you um, in terms of those things, right? So don't make any major decisions in terms of money or love, I would say, this week, uh, because there may be a little bit of confusion, or you may be focused on the perfection side of it more so than the reality of it, because that's what Neptune likes to do. It likes to fill us with dreams and hope, and sometimes in reality we don't see things for as clear as they really are, and that energy happens this week because Neptune is a planet of dreams and it may cloud us with those dreams and mis misconceptions. Now another thing that it does do is it pushes us to dream too and so maybe this is a week where we're starting to really shake off those remnants of the wounds of the past and we see the reality of where deception has happened in love. We see where we've deceived ourselves in terms of love and money. Uh, confused ourselves and those things gain a little bit more clarity as Venus and, and Neptune go into opposition. But on that same day, Venus also transit signs and it moves into its home sign of Libra. This is big because this is the year of Libra. If you watched any of my other videos throughout the year, you know that this is the year where Jupiter, that planet that brings us luck and expansion, has moved into Libra. Libra balances the scales in our lives. This is a year where it's really balancing those areas in our relationships, in our friendships, in our working relationships. Uh, if you're somebody that has clients that you rely on for your work, this is a year where Jupiter is really trying to bring new energy in for new clients for you as well. But this is a year where it also balances that heart center, not just for that money aspect, but for our love in, the, in those relationships. So as Venus moves into its home sign this year, this is huge. This is a big change over the next few weeks. It's really going to be focusing on that harmony, bringing health and healing to those wounds where relationships have taken a ding this year. And not just that, but it's about putting balance and energy back into things to make sure that this is the year of new beginnings that we've been hoping for, right? That's what we want. That's what we want. So, yay, we got that happening. Let's do a little bit of a reading to pull it all together, kind of get a little bit more energy in this year or week of looking to the past. So let's see here. What angel we got working with us this week, huh? Hmm. Ooh, I love it. Archangel Uriel. Archangel Uriel is uh, 
this is huge. There's an Aquarius out there that's definitely going to have a lot of looking to the past and healing wounds this week. Archangel Uriel rules the Aquarian folks out there. But also Uranus, because Uranus rules Aquarius. So he is around this week helping us to break free of the chains of the past, whether it's addictions, whether it's toxic thoughts repetitive cycles that pull us back in and keep us doing those same things over and over again. He's the angel that comes through and removes that energy and helps us to move forward. He's known as the psychologist angel as well. So he's there to help talk with us, help bring brilliant flashes of insight for moving forward into the future. He is that voice that whispers to us. So let's see here. Let's ask Archangel Uriel what to keep in mind this week as we go back to the future in our DeLoreans. <laughs> I saw one the other day on the road too. All right, let's see. This is it. Ooh, hmm. He. This is an interesting card. This is a card of confusion. A card of deception. Hmm. I think what it's. Wow. I see it in so many layers because I know what's going on out there in the universe. This is a card that indicates that maybe some of our plans need some revision, right? That it's that there's more going on behind the scenes that we're not aware of. Sometimes it can indicate deception or that the timing is just bad for something to happen. I think Archangel Uriel helps remind us that maybe things don't happen as quick as we anticipate. and Maybe through the spring and summer that's exactly what it was if the timing wasn't right. Maybe the wheels are starting to move forward now, or maybe this is just a reminder, too, that the reality is hit that maybe what it is that you wanted necessarily isn't what is right for you. That, you, that those plans need to be revised. That's also what Jupiter in opposition with Uranus reminds us, too, is that sometimes the best laid plans that we had set for ourselves maybe five years ago or ten years ago or a year ago, we've come to realize this year aren't necessarily fitting for us anymore. And that it's time to revise those things. So he is coming through, helping us to change those addictions, changes, whatever it is. Remember, he's the one that helps us see it a little bit more clearly and move forward. So I'm going to pull another card just to get a little extra information behind that. Um, also about letting go of those hurts that have happened because of others confusing us or us confusing ourselves or deceiving ourselves because that's also a card of deception, of being duped, really. Um, what are you pulling in with us here? One more. Hold on. Hmm. Impatience. Isn't that something? We just had this card a couple of weeks ago, too, and this card is indicative of the full moon. I think he's telling us that we have a lot of full moon energy that's going to come in in the next week and a half that really helps to illuminate a little bit of light onto this, right? Full moons are times when things end and come to a completion, cycles of completions that happen. But I also see it as well as the impatience part of it as well. The timing isn't right for something. Keep in mind that throughout the remainder of this year, the timing does get better. This is that timing when things really start to shift and change for 2017, bringing in those new beginnings. So reminding us, this card is, right, that we've set those seeds out. The universe has heard our prayers. It's heard, you know, God has heard us. Now we just have to let that seed grow. And it's really hard to keep that patience in that time frame. That's the tough part, right? OMG. Just know that there's a divine order for everything, and all of those little gears in the clock have to align just right before something can really get changed, especially if they're major, major transitions and changes. Know that those angels are around us supporting that, making sure that it happens to bring us greater happiness right throughout this year. So this week, everybody, just know if you have some deja vu moments, things from the past come back, it's all part of it. Don't push it away. Know that maybe where timing was bad in the past, it may be right now. Or maybe where it seemed like the time was right, maybe it isn't right. The universe is going to give you signs and guidance, especially Archangel Uriel, through this week. So everybody, thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful week. Bye.